Hello and welcome to tutorial two, part three of the complete guide to Influx DB2. Today, we're going to take a look at what happens after you first install or run Influx DB. We're going to run through the setup and do a high level exploration of the user interface and the different components, just to give you enough that you can start to experiment and play with Influx DB all on your own. So let's get started. Now I have just run Influx D like we did on the previous lesson. Only I have not started on get started yet, which we have to do now. Now the thing that's important here is that Influx DB2 does not allow you to run or operate it without configuring your first admin user. Authentication cannot be disabled. So you have to provide a username a secure password, preferably not password one, two, three, followed by an organization name and a bucket name. Let's talk about that. InfluxDB2 is multi-tenant by default and that uh, your data uh, dashboards, your metrics can all be separated by organizations. For today, I will create an organization called Rockwood. Then we have buckets. So we have to create our first bucket as part of our organization. And buckets can be thought of like databases in your more traditional database system. Buckets in a time series database, and specifically InfluxDB, have retention policies. So you use buckets as a way to determine when data within that bucket should automatically be expired. For today, we will call this tutorial. That is us set up. We could now log out and log back in if we really wanted. So InfluxDB has a few different options that allow you to get started. You can go through some local metric collections. You can start to specify and configure Telegraph, or you can just say, I will do this later, which is what we're going to choose now. So this is the user interface, and this is the getting started page. We can use the load your data, build a dashboard, or set up alerting buttons to get, well, <laughs> to get started on each of those tasks. What we're going to do first is just take a look at the data tab. So InfluxDB has really great support across all of these different client libraries and Telegraph plugins to start getting metrics into your system. So it doesn't matter what your stack is in your organization there is a pretty good chance that you can get data into your InfluxDB2 instance pretty quickly. We can click on buckets and we see our bucket here. Our tutorial one was created with a retention policy of forever. This means that any data that we write to the tutorial bucket will never be expired. So let's just create one more bucket and we'll call this 5M and the shortest retention policy is one hour. So we'll call it one hour uh, and we will click create. You can see now we have our one hour bucket with our retention policy of one hour. Now what happens here is InfluxDB runs compactions at a regular interval and we'll look for shards within each of these buckets that are older than the time that we allow through retention policy and those will be automatically deleted for us. In future episodes of this course, we will be looking at how to downsample and change the resolution of our data to allow us to move it between buckets so that we can have high frequency, high resolution data that lives for a short amount of time and then aggregate it into other buckets which live for a longer amount of time. We talked about this briefly in the very first part of this course in the introduction to time series. So stay tuned for that video. The Telegraph UI allows us to very quickly create a Telegraph configuration. We can click on the components that we have in our system and it will actually, if we click continue, allow us to configure where our Docker socket is. For Kubernetes, we can specify the URL. Not the right port, but it's okay. For Nginx, and this does require your engine X to have the stats plugin enabled. We can configure Redis. Now I'm not going to do all of these because we don't need them all. What I'm going to do is disable 
these, we'll have our system. We'll select the effort of that. We'll select the one hour bucket and click continue. And we could give this a name. We'll just call this system monitoring. This now gives us an influx DB token that we can export to our environment and a really cool feature of Telegraph that we haven't covered yet, and we will be in the next video in a bit more detail, is the remote configuration where you can specify the URL to pull your Telegraph config. We can click finish here. Now, the alternative approach, if you don't want to use the remote configuration, is to click on this one more time, and you can download it or copy and paste it. And you'll see this is the TOML required for each of the plugins that we use. Now you will still have to export your influx token to your environment for this configuration to work. Next we have scrapers. So InfluxDB has built in support for fetching metrics from remote endpoints. This works really well for Prometheus endpoints that you have available where you want to be able to scrape them on a regular cadence, but we're not going to be using that today. Lastly, on the data tab, we have the ability to manage our tokens. This is my initial admin token that was created when I created the user. And this is my generated token for the influx config that we generated through the UI. Next, we have the explore tab. From here, we can begin to explore the metrics that we have in our system. Now, we don't have any metrics because we're not collecting anything yet. But we will be covering using the explore API in a video very, very soon. Next, we have boards, which allows us to visualize our data. Now, because we generated our first telegraph configuration through the UI, this dashboard was added automatically. Now, if I were to begin running telegraph, we would see metrics and visualizations begin to come in here. The next tab we have is tasks. We will be spending a significant amount of effort playing with tasks over the next week or two. Um, because it's key to the way that we work with downsampling and alerting in our InfluxDB system. Tasks allow us to write Flux scripts that can fetch and manipulate the data within our database and use them to drive decisions and automations in our infrastructure. The next workshop will be this week and it will be focusing on writing your first Flux. So make sure to catch that. Next, we have the Alerts tab. The Alerts tab allows us to then use our metrics to be able to trigger notifications to Slack, email, HTTP endpoints, and more, uh, so that we can understand and you know trigger pagers, send, uh, send Slack messages, just get someone's attention when we have an anomaly within our system. And lastly, we have our Settings tab. InfluxDB allows us to define variables that can be used in our Flux scripts. You can see here that the variable can be of type query, map, or CSV. So there's multiple ways to provide static values or dynamic values from a query to your Flux tasks and queries. One of the coolest things about InfluxDB's latest version, version 2, is templates. We will be spending also a significant amount of time on using the GitOps pattern to apply our telegraph configurations, our dashboards, and our tasks using InfluxDB2 templates. So we won't be looking at this today, but we will have a really cool video on that coming soon. And lastly, we have the ability to manage our labels. Labels can be applied to any dashboard and task, notebook, etc. Um, cool feature, just helps us be, you know, manage and structure the resources that we have available in our influx db2 system so that's again started gate stay tuned there'll be more videos coming really soon i'll speak to you later have a great day